Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm back home at the Shmi Museum with two things to check out today. The first is a pretty big deal. Now, while I've been away in the United States, the guys here, Tom and Brad, took my Lamborghini Huracan STO over to Dub Customs and it has a new look. So I'm gonna see this for the first time. They've covered it up before I've come over. But before that, something else I actually shared with you just before heading off to do with the SF90 Stradale to prepare it for a trip I'm about to be embarking on to head towards the snow with a roof box, which we need to head over to Godlimans to go and collect to see how the Blue Electrico roof box is going to look on the SF90. So two transformations today. We're gonna to head out with that, collect the box, bring it back, get that cover revealed, and see what I make of the STO in its new look. Talking SF90 for a moment, we did a bit of winter preparation. First up was to take it over to Whoops to get the winter tires. We've got the Michelin Pilot Alpens ready to head down towards the snow. I've also just been charging it up because if I charge this car on the SeaTech Charge Storm Connected 2, it takes about an hour and a half to get to 100%. 100% in this is of course not like a full EV. It's only good for 15 miles, maybe 25 kilometers or so, but for short driving, I actually quite like doing that just to drive it electrically. But this color, talking electric, is Blue Electrico, which is the color that we have painted the roof box, which we need to reinstall. Now, you might remember we were trying to work out how to balance this over the antenna, the shark fin here, but I've also got some ideas on how to shift it to be slightly more level, which we're gonna test a little bit later on because we have the suction pads and brackets all in here, which we need to reinstall to drive over to Godlimans to go and collect the box where it's been painted. But you'll also notice, talking Ferraris, we have a new Ferrari here, which belongs to my friends from Team Skookum that was out in the Middle East on Gumball 3000. This 812 Superfast is painted in Verde High Curves. It looks incredible. It was out there in Dubai and Oman, and I actually drove alongside it in the Manhart GT2 RS. But prior to that, this exact car was also on the Gumball 3000 from Toronto to Miami that I did with my GT500. So the two green cars, we're driving through, well, we actually drove to the finish line together and they're now here in my garage in the UK, ready for this car to take part in the Gumball coming up in summer around Europe. Now, before we're gonna do the full reveal, let's come over here. There was so much talk about the colors of the STO, the Viola Bast with the Giallo accents. There have actually been now five other cars that I know of done in the exact same color scheme. There were six of them in the pink and yellow, which kind of gave us the idea to change it up a little bit. So while I was away in the US, Tom and Brad took the car over to Dub Customs to change things. And not just at Dub Customs, they also went to Whoops. So you might have seen some of this. Let's have a quick glimpse. Okay. You see where this is going? Pink with very bright white. But not only that, come around here to the wheels. Check this out. Oh yes, white wheel army with the approval of James Stradman, I should add at this point, with the yellow calipers still to go with the yellow interior. But before we take a complete look at this, Let's get those roof bars on the SF90, get over to Godlimans, go collect the roof box ahead of the tour coming with that, and then come back to take a full look at the STO. Now these are still largely set correctly, but obviously we need to make sure that the front ones are effectively as far forwards as they can be. Because of the shape of this roof and the kind of high point that's about here, the only way to have it sitting completely level is to pull the one that's at the back slightly forwards to try and match it to the front of this. Now, when the roof box is on the top, that will obviously give it a little bit more pitch forwards and it won't point up in the air. I'm not too worried about it, but there is a slight risk with it being pointed up in the air that it gives the car some lift. Obviously you don't want that. Now you are speed limited when you have a roof box on, but imagine right now what this is gonna look like in a moment when we've got a roof box on the top of it. It's gonna be mega. So let me get these attached properly. Let me go and get the bar for the back and then it will be time to head out. We did have this basically there, but with the adjustability that you have inside the box, we should be able to pull it forwards to something like that. And if so, that's gonna work quite a lot better. I think for the moment, yeah, I can attach that over the antenna. Maybe we'll put it kind of here, 
get there and see what's what, um, I just need to take a moment to get this straight and get it right in the middle. This is feeling pretty solid, solid to the extent that the whole car is moving and there's absolutely no give. So we shall go take this out and go see what the final fitment is like. There is something about driving this car in full electric drive that I really enjoy every single time. Beautiful English countryside lanes, full 100% electric power, and we're up to about 60 miles an hour to the speed limit. Nice and easy. Obviously, when you're driving this in full electric, it's a front wheel drive Ferrari because the electric motor on the engine isn't used. Yes, it does that. Don't want it to talk to me. When it hears you say the name of this fabulous Italian manufacturer, it then thinks you want to talk to the car. And that is an eternal <laughs> battle with the thing. <laughs> but anyway, we can hear ever so slight wind noise from the roof bars ahead, as I mentioned when we took the car over to Whoops originally. Please, but can you better explain your request? <laughs> no, no, I can't. Go away. <laughs> stop. How do you stop this? Maybe you can't stop it. Stop. I think you have to just... I've got to turn this off. Come on. Nope, it's going to ping at me again. Oh, that is one faff. I like the buttons on here. I just don't like the voice recognition. There we go. It's gone away now. It's chilled out for a moment. Um, I've completely lost my train of thought. Yes, tiny bit of wind noise. But because this is such a nice road car and so chilled out and docile, there is good sound insulation. It's an EV in a way, and anything electric has to be made so that you don't hear the creaks and sounds and noises because when you're driving like this, obviously you would hear all of it even more than when you have an engine running. When you do start the engine though, just one press of the performance button on the e Manatino. I say, there we go. You have a nice four liter twin turbo V8. Perfect. Anyway, not too far from Godlemans, it's just up here. As we go over the speed bumps here, one of the problems of the winter tyres with the slightly lower profile is that it makes the car sit really low to the ground. Now, the SF90 normally isn't that low. I mean, Ferrari often do this. It's plenty fine for regular dra daily driving, especially with the lift system. But here, there we go, we had a small touch of the aero pieces under the car. They are soft, rubbery plastic, so it's not a problem. Nothing's getting broken. But it does mean that for the tour ahead, I'm gonna to have to be taking it very carefully into garages and things, because otherwise we're just gonna be scraping the bottom of the car. And nobody likes that. Even if you know it's not a particularly big deal, it's still not fun. There are just lots of speed bumps here. That's quite a big one, but we've escaped unscathed. I don't know what the best way over this is. This is a big one. Hopefully we're gonna be fine. We're good, we're good. Whew, that's cool. Maybe one day I need a bronzy, brownie colored car. We'll see. We are back at Godlimans and we're back in electric as it happens. I wonder if we can squeeze on down. Oh, I can catch a glimpse of it there. Tom is ahead of us. <laughs> that looks good, <laughs> right. Let me, I think it'd be fun if we pull this inside with the lift system, hopefully not scraping and then um, go get it mounted on. Come and have a look at this. The roof box that I tracked down because not only would it look the part on top of the SF90, but we could paint it like this as has been done in Blue Electrico here at Godlimans, the exact same shade as the car. This is super cool and it's about to be on the roof. So let me grab some help from John here at Godlimans to try and lift this around to go and put it on the SF90. So let's do this. Which way are we going to go? Round, swing this the other way. One of the reasons I chose this specific roof box is because it's actually not too heavy as these things go while being pretty aerodynamic. So we gotta lift this over, watching for the uh, antenna on the car. <laughs> How cool is that? How cool is that? Blue roof box over blue car needs to go a touch more over to be in the very center. Oh, that is mega. We've got all of the adjustments to make before we lock it down in place. <laughs> that was the vision right there. There's something really cool about a very impractical car wearing a ski box on the top because the luggage space in this thing is almost non-existent, except now we have a few hundred liters of capacity and you can open this from both sides. 
It's all about the details. It's all about the details. Right, let me adjust this, shuffle it around, and then we'll get ready to drive off. Well, it's all done. We've actually realigned it a little bit further back, which means we don't have quite as much overhang at the front, but by having the bar slightly narrower, it sits flatter over the top as well. This looks immense. I mean, just look at that. Roof box on SF90 Stradale with the MSRT Transit as well, which we're gonna be heading back over with now to the Museum, but yeah, what a result. Let's hop in, let's drive back. Let us head out, lift system back up. We are in electric drive again, making the most of it here. I'm gonna to need to get some big angle though, because there is a solid dip, but we should be fine. Should be completely fine here. It's so strange doing this, but hey. We are all golden. All right then, out we go. Cheers to the guys here for their help as always. Actually, we need to keep the lift up for everything ahead of us. I've got a bright pink van behind me. Out we go, I've got to remember to drive on the English side again. Tell you what, every single time just takes a second to think which side of the road should I be on when you've been in Europe or the US and you come back to the UK, just to make sure you don't do anything silly. But right, let's head from here back to base, armed with the roof box right over the front, which you can see less of than you could before. But you'd have no idea that's there driving in here. No idea. This car obviously has so much power and so much silence to it anyway, that it's just like, just normal, completely normal. If you were just out here right now and this car went past, the car's cool, right? And having the roof box on the top is even cooler. And then there's the fact that it's driving an electric, which is just confusing. Everything about this is confusing. The whole package. Although I tell you what, now that we build up some, some speed, I can slightly hear that it's there, but really only just. I don't know what it's gonna be like on a long drive. Obviously for the first few legs, I'm gonna hop out regularly and just check it's all fully secure and in place. But to be honest, this works really well. This is really cool. Mission success. So this part of changing the Schmimobiles in a non-permanent way is really awesome. But we need to get back because we need to see the STO. I need to see what that looks like. With the SF90 parked back up, I've obviously got to say, this looks amazing. It might blend in a little bit with the color of the walls, but this is the coolest thing ever. To somebody who loves skiing, and many of you will know, I used to be a ski instructor. I've spent a lot of my life out on the snow. This setup is like the dream. Younger me would never have believed that that could be possible, that that combination, it doesn't make any sense. But you actually get quite a cool graphic here. You can see on the screen, we are at 60% of battery with a spinning wireframe SF90 on the display. But off the wall charger here, which is of course a quick charger, it's not like a rapid charger at the side of the highway, but it's a quicker charger than using the regular plug. It puts the power back into that and we're all good to go. But let's come over here because we teased this enough and it's time for me to have my first proper look at the STO in its new livery. We of course have the rather lovely cover here, which I just need to switch on. I've got the key fob for it as well so that I can reveal this in all of its glory. All right, are you ready for this? Are you ready to see it? Let's uncover the STO and see what I make of it. Cover going back. <laughs> the viola bast with the white accents, the white splitter, the white wheels, the white skirts, the white roof snorkel, this is absolutely crazy. A completely unique look for one of these. I have not seen another STO in this color combination, unlike what I was saying about all of the yellow accents, as well as having the white livery done in the same areas as the contrast pack, of course, by Dub. Tom also had the idea to add some pinstripes. So we've got them around the front splitter, similar but slightly differently to how they're done OEM, if you have the OEM sticker pack. Obviously the wheels went over to Whoops Will Fix It to get the OEM wheels done in a bright gloss white. Of course the car's been out as well, so we've got a little bit of dust and dirt on here at the moment. But with the center lock, the white wheel army, it's the first time in my life I've ever owned a car actually with white wheels. And I have to say this design suits white so well. This combination looks mega. These excessive different spokes, but cleaning them is gonna be horrific. Cleaning those is not gonna be a fun task. 
in the slightest. As we come further down, we've got this whole rocker panel with the black PPF that we had from before at Topaz, with the white obviously on this wraparound section around the intake. The white snorkel up here, this is all gloss black PPF as well, as opposed to being um, painted, which is an incredibly expensive option, but the white over the carbon fiber for the snorkel. Same with the shark fin. We've got that white spine running over towards the back, where we then have these very bright white end plates and the wrap around with the pinstripes back here. How cool is this? All of the white around here, the pinstripe details. Oh, on the diffuser blades as well. That's so crazy. I mean, I've said it many times. I said it when we took the car to go and visit one Mr. Richard Hammond, and I would wonder what he would make of it now, that the STO is a car that from the ground up doesn't make any sense. It's about being wild and just going completely crazy with the thing because it's not as fast in a straight line as certainly not the SF90, but probably not even the 675 or something like that. It's nowhere nearly as fast on a racetrack as the GT Black Series or the Senna, for example. But it's about experience, it's about drama, and it does that in a way that not many other things do. Hence the idea to give it a bit of a refresh, to give it a new start, to give it a new look. We'll see how I feel about it a little bit more down the line because a few people have obviously mentioned the calipers by keeping the calipers yellow. They're a little bit out of sync with a lot of the rest of it for the time being. But I like that flash of color there because it goes with what's on the inside. If you remember in the interior of the STO, we have all of the yellow piping, the yellow stitching around the steering wheel, the STO embroideries and the Lamborghini crest as well up on the headrests. So that yellow touch on the outside that links through to the inside of the car um, as well. It's just a mad machine. I actually quite like how, you know, you've got the white of the headlights, the white front plate. As much as nobody likes a front plate on a Lambo, you kind of have to have it. So might as well make it all match together. And even down to having the white STO text across the carbon fiber here. Never really studied that before, how exactly that's done. It's, is it painted in the lacquer? It kind of sits like textured. It sits above the carbon fiber weave in that panel, which is a little bit crazy. Oh, that's, that's just mad. That thing is absolutely mad. But like I said, that's what it's supposed to be. That's what this car is all about. That's what this car is supposed to do. Just be utterly bonkers, unrestricted and wild. Back over to this for a moment. Firstly, because it is infinitely cool. But secondly, a couple of questions I imagine some of you are wondering about. While we've been looking at it here, I think we could possibly pull the rear bar ever so slightly further forward. We've got a bit of playroom here, as you can see, which while it's basically straight right now, might just pivot it half a degree further forward, which could help perhaps, I'm not entirely sure with that, we shall see. Another thing I was wondering was how they actually managed to paint this. The upper shell is actually riveted to the lower section. Now to open it, and it's funny having a roof box that's so low. Normally these are on the top of wagons or SUVs or something. You can open it from either side, but just to show you quickly inside here what Godlemans have done. Effectively, it's been detached, riveted just in a couple of points, which means that it came apart nice and easily and has now been put back together exactly as it was and exactly how I wanted it to be. Now, popping a roof box on a supercar is not necessarily the most sensible, easiest solution in the world. But the problem with the SF90 is that there is a complete absence of luggage space. Obviously, I have shown this before, but in the front of this thing, just to show you very quickly, that's all you get. Enough room for your emergency toolkit, some high-vis jackets, and your personalization plaque, and maybe one other small bag. Actually, if you take the little pouch here for the charging cable that it's supplied with, which obviously I'll need to take on a road trip, that's pretty much it. You've got this little pouch, which probably has all the tools and things yes exactly tow bar and things you might need so you've got to take that with you as well that is your tire inflator but that's it so if you want to go away anywhere for any kind of length of time that's obviously not going to work without finding a plan b like this we have thought perhaps about trimming the bars down but that would take a lot of work to get it tidy to get it right and i actually think it doesn't really stand out that much. You don't really notice these unless you're directly thinking about them as I have now brought to your attention. So maybe I have snookered myself on that one, but it looks awesome. It's just really cool to have it looking like that. 
one of those kind of things that car guys and people who love the winter can probably appreciate. Other people are like, why would you do this? Anyway, the sensible solution to going to the mountains with stuff is of course to take your four wheel drive, four seater with plenty of luggage space, practical Ferrari, which is also on winter tires, but that would be too easy. That would be the easy option. What would be really cool though, actually now, is to try and get the STO side by side with the, look at that thing. Look at it from over here. That's so cool. Side by side, those would look mega. But another thing people were asking me, why didn't I put the roof box on this? And there is one really standout reason I'm just gonna to bring to your attention. Imagine a roof box here, snorkel. There's no room to fit it. That sits too high off the deck. You could arguably just take this off, take off the engine cover and run it without. You probably could run this car without, but that would be weird and that would be slightly wrong. So unfortunately, a snookered problem here is having the snorkel on the top. Couldn't take the STO, couldn't take the Senna, couldn't take the Zenvo, could take the Ford GT. And we did a museum video testing this where when it's in place, with the dihedral doors, remember they open upwards rather than outwards, they're about that close on each side to smashing the windows. So it's doable, but you gotta get it right. So the SF90 to me, given it has four wheel drive with the electric system, it's a car I love driving and it's a car that just looks so cool like that was the reason or the one to go for, we could say, the one that fits this process perfectly. Anyway, I think we should probably wrap it up for there. The STO's new look is great. I can't wait to get this out on the road. I don't know if it's more controversial or less controversial than it was before, but either way, it is what these kind of things are all about. I hope you like it as much as I do today, seeing it in full, unveiled. I hadn't even actually spotted or mentioned before the change to the wing, the extra detail here, the pinstripe on the front that then comes around to the upper section on the back as well. All of those small touches. And the beauty of doing this with vinyl is that it can be changed. It can be done differently. If down the line, I feel like a new look for it, we'll go for it. I love the yellow, it was wild. But like I say, there are now six of them with the viola bast and yellow, or there are now five technically, five that we know of. There might even be some others. So we've given it a complete overhaul and that's basically been my reaction to it today. So thank you very much for watching guys. I'm looking forward to sharing plenty more with each of these and the other Shmimobiles as well with you. But that's it for this time. I'll see you very soon. Cheers.